All right, so I'm going to do a follow-up to last month's leadership chat. And last month we talked about learning to lead yourself. And I want to know what you learned from last month's leadership call, what trait you chose to work on, because we talked about just choosing one trait to really try and perfect um, so that you can lead yourself better in order to lead your team better. And I mean, even your customers, and it's not just about your team, you're, you're a leader of everyone who's part of your business. So um, there's always going to be something you can work on always. I mean, it, as soon as you think you've got it all figured out, you're like, oh crap, I'm horrible at this one thing <laughs> because you really start, you'll start focusing on one thing, you get really good at it, and then you start slacking in another area. And then it's like, okay, but if you're always willing to grow, you're going to do awesome. But what trait, um, I know I had y'all drop your traits that you were going to work on in the chat box last time, but let me know what trait you have been focusing on in the last month and how that how that call last month helped you. Um, so remember your life and leadership is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So whatever you are putting into your mind and whatever you are feeding your brain is what is going to be reflected in your leadership. So um, the way you lead your team is a direct reflection of how you lead yourself. Uh, so Cassidy said consistency. Consistency is so good too, because it covers everything. I mean... Yeah, so that threw you for a loop, obviously. Um, but yeah, you are back with a plan. You're prepared, ready to go. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. So what are you consuming is one of the things I want to talk about today. What are you, like I said, filling your mind with, filling your brain with? Um, I think Brittany talked about this on our last, on one of her last trainings in the Flash to Full-Time program. But if you weren't in there, you didn't hear this. But she talked about how are you feeding your soul with junk food? Are you on a junk food diet for your soul or are you filling it with healthy food? Just like our bodies. I mean, if we are filling ourselves with crap food and candy and junk food and fast food, like we're not going to grow or get stronger. And it's the same way in your leadership. Everything that goes into your mind is going to come out into your leadership. So, um, uh, where was I at? This is why I don't like notes because because <laughs> I get so off and I'm like, oh, lost my place. I literally already said all this, but okay. So be intentional with what you're consuming and how much of it you're consuming. And this can be a struggle nowadays with all of the negativity and the just craziness in the world right now. And you have to be really intentional with what you're listening to first thing in the morning, first of all, because what you're listening to first thing in the morning or what you're watching consuming is going to determine how your entire day is set up. It's going to determine if it's set up for success or not or failure. So it really, really matters. I know most of you get up first thing and fill your mind with something, whether it's a training, whether it's something inspirational, just whatever area you're wanting to grow in. Um, and that's, that's good. I mean, that, that is, like I said, it's a direct reflection. Your leadership is a direct reflection of everything you're filling your mind with. And so be really intentional about how much of certain things you're consuming. Make sure you're limiting the things that are not moving the needle for you and helping you grow. Um, and just pay attention to how much time you're spending in each area. And, um, so the next thing is how do you grow and get better? So, you grow and get better by doing more of something or something different than what you normally do. So for example, a workout, um, that's just the first thing that I think of. Like if I'm constantly doing the same exact workouts and never increasing my weight, or I'm always running a half a mile and never trying to increase that, I'm never going to grow. So you need to be focused on doing more of something or something different than what you normally do. That's what's going to move the needle. That's what's going to help you grow as a person. It's going to help you grow as a business owner, a leader, everything. So um, you have to grow in new areas so that you can stretch yourself and always be a student, always be trainable, coachable, willing to learn new things. I, I feel like this is something that is not optional in leadership. Like you have to be coachable, trainable, we're the hardest people to lead and coach ourselves. <laughs> I feel like, like we're stubborn, we're, 
you know, it, it's, we can lead other people and tell them all the things to do, but then half the time we're not doing those things ourselves, or we can tell them, you know, we can believe in somebody and tell them how great they are at something, but we're over here telling ourselves how horrible we are at it and how we're a failure and all these things. So, um, as an example for always being a student and coachable and teachable. So for me, one of the things that comes to mind that I had to learn how to do is live videos, public speaking, things like that. Seven years ago, I would have a near anxiety attack just doing a speech in college in front of my class. Like it made me want to vomit. And so when, when I joined Cincy, live video wasn't even a thing back then. I feel like old when I say that or something, but, um, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing until probably a year or two in, but I knew that I needed to do some kind of connection with people aside from just pictures and posts. So I would just do pre-recorded videos and I'm telling you, I would stress out so bad over a pre-recorded video and I would just pick it apart and I would just talk, like tell my husband, oh, I sound so stupid. I look, look at this pimple, like all these things. And just would be so hard on myself and would be so self-conscious. And that's something I had to learn to do. I had to grow in that new area because I knew if I didn't, it would be doing me a disservice in my business. So I mastered that over the last seven years. I still get nervous when I do any kind of training or live video or Zoom like this, like before it, I'm like, Ooh. but, and especially like if I'm speaking at an event for the whole company doing trainings, but I'll never forget the first email I ever got to be a presenter at Cincy Family Reunion, or maybe, no, it was World Tour, I think it was the first one. And I was like, no, what? Like, I, no, this makes me want to throw up. And then I talked to my superstar director at the time, or my who is still my upline superstar director, and she was like, you better do it. And I was like, okay, this scares me. This makes me really uncomfortable. I'm really terrified, so I'm going to do it. And so I just hit the button. I told him I would volunteer for it and I did it. And ever since then, I've done quite a few trainings at World Tours and Cincy Family Reunions. And I, I mean, it has helped me grow so much as a person, as a leader, everything. And to think, looking back seven years ago, I couldn't even turn my camera on and look at myself without freaking out. And now I can just do a presentation for the entire company like I knew that that was something important for me to grow in. I mean, I have a YouTube channel now. Like, I literally don't care what I look like on a video anymore. I could care less. Y'all are just lucky that I got dressed up today. <laughs> but, um, and then another example is, I'm not going to say her name, but one of our directors in our organization that I was talking to yesterday, the day before, I've been talking to her the last few days. She's one of my frontline directors. And she has been struggling with, getting out of her comfort zone of learning to coach and do one-on-one -on -one calls. And I remember being absolutely terrified the first time I coached someone. I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. How am I going to teach them what to do? And it's just one of those things that you have to practice, practice, practice until you get that skill perfected. And even now I've been coaching one-on-one -on -one for three years, I think. And I still have that negative Nancy thought that I call her Margaret she will come into my head and she you know will say you literally don't have any you're not helping this person like you don't even have any value to add like are you really doing anything are you really accomplishing anything and helping this person but you have to learn to crush those thoughts because they will absolutely destroy you if you if you play into that but learning to coach I've been so proud of her she did her first coaching call yesterday or the day before all my days have run together this week I don't even know how it's Thursday already but she right like this morning I thought it was like Tuesday and I was like oh crap um but she was willing to push herself in a new area and grow in a new area because she knows how important it is to her business to help her team members grow which is also going to in turn help her grow as a leader if you're not working one-on-one -on -one with your team you're not helping them grow. And if you are working one-on-one -on -one with your team, you're helping them grow, which in turn helps you grow. It's all about helping other people succeed. And that, that is going to be how you succeed. So be, um, be willing to grow in new areas and stretch yourself, get uncomfortable, do the things that scare you. And we all know this, we all tell our teams this, but I think it needs to be told to us still um, for us to, 
for it to really sink in. But um, the confidence you gain from growing in those new areas is going to make you comfortable with getting uncomfortable. You'll get more and more used to it. You'll be more and more willing to get out of those comfort zones and do the things that scare you. Growth and comfort never coexist. I want you to write that down. If you don't already have that written down, I love that quote. Growth and comfort never coexist. Don't tell your team to get uncomfortable doing something if you're not doing the same. If you're not willing to grow and learn new things yourself as a leader and do the things that scare you and not only do the things that scare you but share those things with your team show them what you're doing that scares you if you're out in public giving out a sample to somebody take a picture and show them what you're doing um take a screenshot of the conversation you're having with someone that scares you to death take, make a video of yourself coaching someone and you know you're learning that new skill of coaching whatever it is that you're doing make sure you're showing them those things because our team has no idea if we're working if we're not actually showing them that we're working they don't know the behind the scenes if they don't see it gotta add that one to my bathroom mirror post it's girl your whole mirror is gonna be covered <laughs> okay so um what do you feel like you can't do as a leader I want you to think about those things. Think about the things that you feel like you can't do and write them down. Those are the skills you need to be really focused on and you need to be making sure you're being intentional with rewording that and not just saying like, I can't do this or I'm terrible at this, but reword it and say that I can't do this thing yet. And that is something that Heidi taught us, I don't know, two or three years ago at SFR in her speech. It was so good and she, it was all about yet. And not just saying, well, I can't do this or I'm not good at this, but putting yet at the end of the sentence makes all the difference. I can't do this yet. I'm not good at this yet. And those are the things that you need to be focused on working on. Um, I had no clue how to lead when I joined this company. The most leadership I knew about was I was co-head cheerleader of my cheerleading squad. So, I mean, I had a little bit of leadership experience, but like that's nothing like this. Uh, well, there's a lot of similarities, actually, but it's just it was a whole new world that I knew nothing about. Didn't know about direct sales, didn't know how it worked, didn't know anything about it. So that is I mean, I have I've been learning for seven years and I'm still learning every single day. So that is how I've got to where I'm at is just by consuming as much training and podcast like YouTube videos, podcasts, audio books, because I don't read, but a lot of you probably read. I think you read. Um, but there's so many good books out there. And so just always consuming as much as you can to help you grow in your skills, your business skills, your leadership skills, your personal development. And that's also not optional. You have to be doing your personal development and feeding your soul with healthy things, whether it's reading your Bible in the mornings, doing a devotional, filling yourself with um, inspirational podcasts to help you grow as a person, because it all starts in here. I mean, you, if, if you are not healthy mentally and you're not filled with joy every single day, you can't pour anything into other people. So you'll always hear us say you can't pour from an empty cup. And it's so true. So some things that I have done and learned to grow as a leader, positivity. So I used to be a very negative thinker. I actually talked about this in my stories this morning. I was a very negative thinker. It drove my husband nuts because he's a very like, um, what do you call it? Optimist. Optimist. Yeah. And I was the opposite of that. So I would literally find the, the negative in everything. And the reason why I did that is because I was surrounded with people who thought that same way. I was surrounded with people who were negative Nancys and pessimists and just would not ever see the positive in any situation. It was always thought the worst of everything. So um, overthinking. And this is something that I still struggle with, but I've gotten so much better about it. I'm a major overthinker. I will sit there. And I know some of our, some of my directors are like this and we talk about it a lot, but just overthinking to the point that it's like, you don't even do the thing because you sit there and overthink it so much. And you're like, well, it might not be good enough. It might not look good enough. It might not look like this other person. Just do it. Just do the thing because overthinking is, it's just not, it's not healthy. How to rest and delegate things. That was a huge one for me. I'm terrible at resting. I'm terrible at slowing down. I'm an over 
worker. I'm just a workaholic. I love my job. So when you love your job and your job is right here in your house, it's hard to not just want to be in here all the time doing something. So I had to force myself to learn how to rest. When I started getting burnout is when I learned that. Like I knew that, okay, I'm burnt out. So why am I burnt out? It's because I'm overworking. It's because I have no boundaries. I am messaging team members and customers at all hours of the day. Um, I'm just doing too much and I have to rest. So that is when I decided that, okay, after 4 p.m. on weekdays and on the weekends, I'm resting. I'm not studying Scentsy. I am off. And I also had to learn how to delegate things. I had to learn that I can't control everything and I'm one person and I can't do it all. So I had to learn that I'm going to have to delegate samples. I'm going to have to delegate the things that I don't have to do or the things that don't bring me joy and let go of that control and let somebody else do it. And the same goes for like trainings. I used to want to do every single training myself. And I finally realized that, no, I'm going to have to delegate this out to other people because y'all need to hear from other people. Y'all need to hear different perspectives. And these people need to learn how to lead. So you need to be delegating trainings and things like that to your team members who are rising leaders to help instill confidence in them, help them to believe that they're a great leader, that they have value to add. You're never going to build leaders if you don't delegate things to them and ask them to do things for you. Just, I was just such a control freak and it was really hard for me to get over, but I got over it and it has helped my business grow tremendously. Um, public speaking already went over that and training like I never would have thought that I would be on here doing these kind of trainings all the time and, <clears throat> and doing trainings, company-wide trainings, coaching, same thing. Terrified the first time I did it, but I had a system in place that, you know, it, it helped me. It's the same systems I've shared with y'all. And it's what the director I was talking about the other day used and it kept her on track. It kept her, it gave her a guideline of what to even talk about. And it, it's very it's not a good idea to go into coaching blindly. You need to have something filled out in advance so that you know what you actually need to be talking about with that person because everyone's different. It's not like training where you're just training a group of people like this. It's it's based on that person's specific mindset, their fears, their struggles. Everyone's different. So um, learning how to, oh, I already said that, learning how to listen better. I used to be a horrible listener. I could talk all day. I can talk, 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 but I used to be so bad about just sitting and listening to somebody and asking questions and things like that. So that's something else I've gotten through. And then there's things like business skills, using mail merge to do my address labels for my customers and my team, spreadsheets. Y'all didn't have a clue about no Excel and stuff like that when I, when I joined Scentsy. And it wasn't until like four years in that I even figured out mail merge and like more details about Excel, but I watched YouTube videos I learned from other leaders. I learned from my husband because he's great at that stuff. Um, he also owned a business. He's on two businesses. So he knows like the businessy stuff and he has helped me with all that. So utilize who you know, who is strong in the areas you're weak in and learn from them. So learning just how to be a business owner, because I had to learn, eventually I had to turn my business into an official business for tax purposes and all that. Like I didn't know how to form an LLC or an incorporation. I didn't, I didn't know anything about how to do taxes. I didn't know anything about how to pay an employee, like things like that. I didn't know how to interview an employee. I, last year I got an assistant, like an official assistant, and I didn't know what to do. Like I was over here Googling, like, how do you interview someone? Like, what do you ask them? And what do you not ask them and stuff like that? Like, you just have to be willing to learn. Um, Last thing is who you surround yourself with. And we talk about this all the time, but so we talked about what you're consuming. We talked about how do you grow and get better? And now the last one is who do you surround yourself with? And it's a huge one. So if you want to grow in leadership, you never want to be the smartest person in the room. You never want to be the most successful person in the room. You want to surround yourself with people who know more than you, smarter than you, better at certain skills than you that you suck at. Um, people who have been where you are, but they are further along in their journey. Like they are where you want to be. Surround yourself with those kind of people, as well as positive people who have the same goals as you, the same mindset as you. Um, so they don't necessarily all have to be people who are, you know, directors or superstar directors or whatever. Those people can definitely be a part of your circle, but also find people who are 
in the same place in their journey as you, but share the same goals and the same dreams and the same mindset. So you can, you can have people as your mentors too, without even talking to them all the time. Like the people you follow on social media that you look up to, the directors, the star directors, the superstar directors that you look up to, those people can be mentors for you. If you're following along with them and replicating what they're doing and making it your own, like I, I follow people that I look up to on social media and I don't necessarily have a friendship with every single one of them. Some I do, which has been great and has helped me so much. And they're part of my circle. And I'm very thankful for that. But some people I just follow the people who inspire me. They give me ideas for things to post myself, things that I can do in my business. So those people can also be part of your circle and be your mentors as well. Um, so surround yourself with people who are great at what you want to be great at, whether it's business, fitness, marriage, parenting, like anything, surround yourself with those people. Um, I, I surround myself with people who make more money than I do, who are more successful than I am, who have been in Cincy longer than I have. Um, I, those are the types of people I surround myself with because that's where I want to be. And so you need to be really intentional with your circle. She always says, show, show, show me your, your friends. friends. I'll show you my, I'll show you your future. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to mess it show up. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You are a direct reflection of the 10 people that you spend and talk to the most. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that includes family oh, and absolutely. You know, sometimes it sucks, but you have to limit. Like you think you can't be influenced by people. <clears throat> you're wrong. Yeah, anyone Sometimes. and everyone can influence you if you spend enough time around them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta watch that. So, um, yeah, so I went over that. Your circle needs to be better than you, smarter than you, more experienced than you. Um, and it helps you maintain a growth mindset. So, there's a growth mindset, there's a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is someone who is not willing to step out of their comfort zone or to try new things or they just are full of excuses like, oh, well, this nobody wants to join. And then you're like, OK, so what are you going to do about it? And they're not willing to do the extra work or learn something new to do those things. But a growth mindset, they're always going to see the positive in situations. They're always going to be willing to say, OK, this is not working. What do I need to change that is going to make this work? What do I need to learn? Where do I need what areas do I need to grow in? And that's the kind of mindset we have to have as leaders. It's not optional. So um so are your friend? think about are your friends pushing you or pulling you back? Are they filling you with positivity and inspiration or are they filling your mind with negativity? Like I said, this goes for family members as well. Anyone who you're surrounded with and the people you're following on social media. And if you're following people on social media that are causing you to compare or they're causing you to like be jealous, like things like that, work on that mindset of, okay, this is, it really makes me jealous that she has these things, but you really have to sit down and reflect and say, okay, but she has put in way more work than I have. And I'm at the beginning of my journey and she's in the middle of her journey. What can I do? What can I replicate that she's doing so that I can get there? So it, that's another, you know, it's a growth mindset. It's a positivity thing, finding a switching every negative thought into a positive um, don't just follow your mentors, pick their brains, ask them questions, ask them for coaching. So many, sorry, so many people are afraid to reach out for a coaching call, or they think that I'm this person that is like so high up and would never even talk to them. And I'm like, that is not how this company works. Like we are here to help you succeed. And that is all we want out of this business is to help you be successful and help you reach your goals and your dreams and see your potential like that is what we're here for and I know a lot of companies are not like that so we're very blessed to be a part of this company and our culture and our values are just top notch um, but don't be afraid to reach out to your mentors with questions for coaching like that's another thing that it's a fear that you have to get over sometimes and just reach out. Now, they're not going to buy. They're not going to, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, <clears throat> there is so much more inside you than you can ever imagine. Um, I, like I said, I'm nowhere near the same person I was seven years ago. I'm a completely different person in the best way. And since he is the sole reason for that, um, I had no way of like personal development or any kind of positivity or inspiration around me. When I joined, I was working in the dental field and I just went to work and came home every day. Like 
I didn't listen to anything to help me grow. I didn't, there was no development there. There was nothing like that. It was just go to work, come home. Um, and so, and, and one of the first videos I ever watched when I joined Sensi was about switching your mindset from negative to positive. And I'm so glad that I watched that video and I'll never forget it. My memory is real bad, but I remember that video like from seven years ago. I remember watching that video and how she was talking about, you're going to have to switch your mindset to be successful. And it is so, so true. I would not be where I'm at today if it wasn't for my mindset shift. She wouldn't be where she's at today if it wasn't for her mindset. So it all comes down to that. Um, but like I said, there's so much more potential in you than you have a clue about. And when you're being intentional about your personal growth and your leadership development, you're going to find, you're going to discover things about yourself that you never even knew existed. You never even knew it was there. So in conclusion, um, just ask yourself what you're doing today that will strengthen your leadership for tomorrow, what you're filling your mind with. Are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Do you need to limit how much you're talking to certain people? Um, what, what are you listening to? What books are you reading? What are you filling your mind with? What are you learning? What are you feeding yourself? So those are all questions that you need to ask yourself um, to make sure that you're leading yourself correctly in order to lead others correctly. So do y'all have any questions at all? Yes, your mindset is literally everything. Michelle is like the mindset queen. She, she needs to do a training on that. She's awesome. Absolutely, she does. Thank you all for being on. Ansley, you're a rock star. Ansley needs now. to do a training. Yes. I remember her video from, what program Fired did up, we do? Fired, Fired up in February, where we shared like stories. And mm -hmm. oh my gosh, she's so good. I, I loved all of their stories that shared, honestly. We need to share yeah. that group, like reshare that group because it's so good. It was good. It was good. <clears throat> all right. Well, if nobody has any questions, we will let y'all go work your businesses. I'm coming to Alabama. Come on, girl. Come on. It's not far. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not that far. So I'm here for it. All right, y'all. Will you enjoy the rest of your day? Go work on your leadership development. And we will see y'all on the next one.